Okay, tournament is about to start in less than three minutes. Uh, anyone can join. It's yeah, it's free for everyone, and there's there there are prizes. Yeah, special thanks to Road to Chess Master for putting this together. Um, it should be it should be a yeah a, a very competitive field. Ojo means I in Spanish, I think. Also, okay, good luck to my opponent. Um, ah, what to play? Let's play London. Let's stick with my main fun repertoire. Um, been playing a I lot of London recently. I better than one. Mm. So Bishop D6. This is playable. I don't know if I've seen like this exact move order. I'll play ninety five like right away. This Chess is a can't follow a plan too conflicted. F six. I'm already out of opening prep. This is very rare for me, especially so early. Bishop d six is a new move. I'm sure it's been played before, but. At least new for me. So I, I'm considering g4 takes take or um takes takes with the the d pawn. It probably doesn't work. Bishop e4 gets murky. Um, so let's play this. Yeah, very, very strange opening so far. I don't mind the position, though, because Black's committed to, to e6. And there's ideas bishop d3, knight d2. Maybe some idea of g4 as well. Actually, g4 could be a threat, because after this, I take on e6. And queen e7, fair move. Also has the idea of, of queen b4 check. So let's play... Let's play knight c3. Knight c3 might be threatening. Knight d5 would be so sweet if it works. No, there's g6, though. So. So maybe I can check first. Provoke g6 and then just move back. And then the bishop will be a little bit more stuck. And if black does something else... Like if black plays this, I might consider taking on d5. Because after takes, 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 I have knight g7 winning the bishop. Ah, oh, the problem is g6 still. Yeah, let's, let's be a little bit careful. I'm going to be solid too. Knight defends the queen. The bishop attacks the bishop. Oh, it's probably close to just balanced here. I want to use the C file. Uh, rook C1. Yeah, rook C1, knight B5 is, is one of the main ideas. King E2 ideas as well. This is a position where the king is just better in the center. Um, to just support the pawns. No need to castle. Also some idea knight, yeah, knight a4 to, to c5. If black ever plays b6, then the c6 is a bit more vulnerable. Ooh. That's interesting. I'll start with king d2. 
Because C7's hanging. So I'm, I'm happy with this trade. Mm -hmm. The idea is probably H4 at some point. So basically, I'm trying to play on both sides of the board. Like target weaknesses on the queen side and on the king side. It's very, very positional. Yeah, here... I'll take rook f1 and I'm finally winning material. As e6 will fall. And now this is a fork. This is nice. This is a nice kind of positional game. Um... Good take on. I'll just take on f8. And still target the c file. Now the 5 is the main idea. Okay. I'll have to check that opening. That was a weird, uh, definitely a weird opening that I should be prepared for. Okay, thanks for the game, Nizar Cutten. Um, I'll open analysis board and we'll go back to tournament. So, yeah, some games still going. I think it should be possible to late join a few rounds in. So if you're just joining the stream, uh, you can use the join command and play play this tournament. It's 10 rounds of 3 plus 1. So it should take probably about 90 minutes. Um, I'll watch some of the games, but first things first. Let's quickly analyze what was this opening. Bishop d6. Oh. This has been played at like top level. What did Kofsky play? The the London OG. Very calm bishop g3. Ah, so it just plays like a queen's gambit setup. I like what Kofsky did. I built kind of a stone wall. Engine's not too impressed. Check what Wesley did. Needs Magnus. Yeah, it looks like a solid position. Okay. Let's watch some games. Um, oh yeah, just click the link from Nightbot. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> uh, the link is in the chat. Have to, have to gauge the competition. So Penguin won, Creep 31. Let's check out this game. Oh, it's I barely know the rules. Ooh, this is interesting. It's a time scramble. So, yeah, time scrambles with a one second increment are not easy. Because really, you have to play on pure instinct. Ooh. Ooh. I think white was worse earlier. Like, there, there was definitely potential for an upset. But now white's probably better. Oh, I forgot to change the chat thing. Oops. Do, do people, should I leave the chat thing on? Let me ask the chat. No, okay, I'll, I'll get rid of the chat. Uh, there we go, okay, back to normal. I, I completely forgot about that. Sorry chat. Sorry to the 41% the of you. Oh, some people upset. <laughs> Maybe once in a while. Is that that's, that's actually pretty close. So once in a while, I'll, I'll probably have it on. Maybe when I do like blindfold. Because some some people. Oh, let me go back to. Oops. Oh, that was really close. I almost forfeited. Oh, that was really close. Yeah, like. Three more seconds, I would have, I would have forfeited, man, <laughs> and then I would have had to blame chat. 
Oh, F4. Um, I was showing this to a student the other day. So there's a very specific move order to play against the stone wall, which involves exactly this. I think it's just castling here. Queen one is a main move. That's also possible. Pretty sure bishop f5. Yeah, it's very important, like in these, especially when white plays the stone wall, to have the light square bishop outside the pawn chain to trade it for white's good bishop. Because then white's left with a very bad bishop. And I really don't mind the structure. Um. Because the f pawn's not weak. Could already consider knight e4. I think I'll start with rook e8. Most flexible. And then eventually. Like, eventually, I want to play this in f6. And queen b6 is a move. I'll play queen b6. Just applying some some pressure. There's some x-ray vision against the king. There's a line, takes, takes, and then I just take everything on e5. So king h2 is very logical. Um, probably now knight e4. Always have to be aware of this move. I don't think it really does much. And the main problem for white when playing the stone wall is this bishop on uh, on c1, which at least for the foreseeable future, it's not really going to have a, a purpose in life. Okay. Oh, oh, that's tricky. It's probably good for me. But there, there's a line to calculate f6, knight d7, queen d8, because I have to defend the pawn. And then knight c5, um, probably bishop c5, bc5, queen d3 looks nice. I'd be down a pawn, but just a really nice position. There's also knight c4 here. But we're probably going to get a situation where it's like it's a knight versus a really bad bishop. And it could be a very good knight if I get to d3. Played chickened once before. Hmm. So yeah, those were the only two candidate moves. Oh, this is actually a clever... I guess it allows this and stuff happens. So queen c7. <laughs> yeah, at this point it's very positional. I want to be aware of time and not flag. And probably go for... Realizing it's hard to get the knight to d3. What to do? I could take. Yeah, the knight wasn't doing anything here because it was just like blocked by the pawns. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the future is for the knight. Get the queen off the d file. So I'm hitting the b2 pawn. I want to go for rook d8. I'll start with rook d8. Maybe rook c8, queen a6. So hitting this pawn. Some idea of queen e2. Queen e2, rook d2.
the queen a4, a tricky move. Basically hitting the rook so white can't take the pawn. In b3 I take a3. I want to double up. What I could do, I all consider it, is just shutting down the whole position, like c4, knight d5, queen b3. But then it might be hard to break through. g4, ooh. Okay, let's actually shift. Let's shift focus to the king side. You just have to play quick moves. Knight d5 should come soon. Oh, oh, that was a mouse slip. Not a bad mouse slip, though. I meant to play knight d5. Okay, let's go for this and rook d2 coming. Ooh. Rook d2 is still coming. Move this rook. I didn't see the breakthrough. Ooh, that's a fork. That's a nice fork. Okay, that was close. I was going to say, if this was Hikaru's chat, there, there'd be a lot of yep clock. Only one yep clock in this chat. <laughs> okay. I've Survived. risen 300 rating points since I started watching your stream. Oh, oh, nice. Thanks for the awesome content. I'll take all the credit. Thank you. Who is that? That was Drewski's. Yeah, keep it up. And thanks for subbing for five months. You like my shirt. Oh, the jacket. This is, I think it's technically a jacket. Yeah, Hikaru, <laughs> it was funny. We, we interviewed Hikaru on stream today and he was wearing the same, the same jacket. It's, um, yeah, it's a St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. Uh, what year was it? I don't think it says the year. Maybe 20, 2018 or 2019. Um, I can see if they're, they're still selling it. It would be Q Boutique Apparel. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. Oh, they have they have a very similar one. Q Boutique. If you Google Q Boutique St. Louis. Uh, I think this is a similar one. This is a World Chess Hall of Fame jacket. Anyway. Um, ooh. Opponent almost didn't show up. But is here. Okay, so this is, this is a title player playing Taco Fall. I'm going to play London. So this is the thing about Swiss pairings. Is like As you keep winning... Opponents will keep getting more difficult because I'm playing someone who also won their first two games. Okay, this is one way of playing. Um, let me go for this line. Early bishop h6. Black is not afraid. I usually play a position like this without the knight committed to f3. I, I more often play this position with castling. But this still looks enjoyable. Yeah, c5 is a move. Hmm.
Okay, c5 is a good move. I'm wondering if I can castle here and then takes. And we could just get in like a dragon structure with a knight misplaced on d7. I think I'll do that. Because if takes takes, we, we basically have a, a Sicilian dragon resembling some Yugoslav. Where like more often the knight comes to c6. I haven't committed to bishop c4 yet, which is probably good. So let's just go for the attack. Going for h5. Yeah, there's a nifty idea. Let's imagine b5, h5, knight takes h5. I would have rook h5, gh5, queen g5 with me, which is force mate. Yeah, this is a classic, very classic attack against the kingside fianchetto. Because the combination of pawn, bishop, ooh, are we going into it? Ooh. I probably should not have allowed that. But now I have to live with the consequences. I could take. I could take, take, and then queen h6, but then knight g4. It's getting weird. I've kind of committed myself. Because knight, okay, there's also knight d5. Knight d5 might be the way to go. Knight d5, knight e4, queen e3. And then there's takes, 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 takes. I think that's good. It's gonna, yeah, it's getting very wild. So I sacked a pawn, but the knight's kind of hanging. There's still attack on the king side. Um, I'm very willing to sack a rook or two rooks, assuming I'm just mating. And the knight on d5 is actually very useful because in some cases I, I hit e7, I give knight f6. Ooh. Wait, is this just winning? So knight takes e7. I should start with 97. It was very close to winning. Black considering this. There's a really cool line. Um, I think I want to play it. And I can start by taking, and there's takes king here or here. Uh, does it work? There's queen e7. And queen e7 might defend for black. Let's take here first, because there's knight g6 possibilities. I'm looking for force mate. Okay, I can win the queen. Where's my mate though? Okay, winning the queen is good enough. Yeah, this this is completely winning. I'm I'm pretty sure I missed some kind of force mate. Um what do I want to do here? This is force mate. Queen g7 and then queen f7. Okay, that was a nice game. That was a nice kind of attacking game. Um, yeah, I basically got everything I wanted. I spent a lot of time almost flagged. But uh, there's a really cool line. Open analysis board. There's a cool line. Um... I spent a lot of time here because I wanted to take, 
and then queen h6, like sack the queen. And it's very close to working. It might actually work, because if takes, takes, king here, uh, knight f5, this is mating. This would be a, a really sweet mate. I just didn't fully calculate this move. Because uh, after knight f5, there's king g5. It seems really close. But even like looking at this position, I'm not seeing it. I could take bishop e2, f4. I think white's going to run out of fuel. Here it takes. You could sack everything, and it might be mate. But it might not be. So let's check with the engine. So first of all, is white winning here? Wow. <laughs> engine is so cold-blooded. This is minus, minus 5.7. So let's go back. So this position is winning. Uh, what did I play? Oh yeah, I took on, yeah. Like, this is... Uh... Oh, so Stockfish not finding force mate. Yeah, I thought there could be something like with knight f5, but this was simple enough. Okay, that was nice. It was a quick game too. Um, oh, Penguin also 3 out of 3. I could very possibly be playing Penguin very soon. I should check my game with Penguin. He beat me in this uh, this arena. Was it this game? I think it was this game. Yeah, he played this knight c3 move. So if I run into this, I'll play e6. Oh, I played I played knight c6 and this is losing. Probably just a6. It takes. Okay, queen a5 looks simple. Bishop g4 also. Maybe I'll play bishop g4. Play this line. Oh, next round starts in 10 seconds. Okay. Let's focus. Closing tabs. Okay. Oh, I'm playing Fool Dan. Good luck, Fool Dan. I've played Fool Dan many times. Fool Dan beat me the last time we played. Every time I play Fool Dan, we play like some crazy opening. Oh, it's it's gonna be crazy again, I guess. Usually a3 is intending b4. Um, but now b4 is not possible. So it's basically a dragon with white committing to a3. Interesting. Hmm. I guess the queen. The queen can find a home here. Bishop d2, probably queen d6. Now hitting b2. Keep developing. I think d6 is very logical. Yeah, kind of one of these uh, these dragon positions. The center is stronger than usual. I might want to play bishop a6. Dance around with the queen. At some point, the queen might swing over. Looking at bishop g4. Yeah, maybe bishop g4 is the way to go. Try and provoke f3. And then bishop e6. Not sure if I'm achieving so much. I am allowing knight d5 here. Probably have to play queen d8. There's queen c5, there's, there's bishop e3. Could be trading, or not. I want to keep my bishop. Yeah, it's kind of a game of, of cat and mouse. Like this knight. I'm not sure if the knight is happy on f4. Because it's kind of restricted by pawns. Put the rook on b8. 
So there's a clear target for the rook and the bishop. Potential ideas of queen b6. I should really be considering e5. e5 looks really nice. Because knight h3 now I can take in knight h5. The square is so juicy. The queen h4 coming. e5, it's a type of move that is very rarely good in the dragon. But yeah, here it was, was justified. Hitting h3. White's probably debating between these moves. Hmm. Still takes work. Like, I don't really want to play Knight F4. Even though it's probably not a bad move. There's F5, which is... He's very ambitious. Oh, what to do? I'm gonna play this first, because I might want to play f5. The king is just better on, on h8 anyway. If queen g4, I'd probably, probably avoid the queen trade. Maybe the queen just goes all the way back. I mean, overall, I like the position. Yeah, queen d8. So now f5 is actually prevented. Hmm. How to continue? Okay, the queen found a new home. Rook is pinned. King is tied down to the rook. This rook is stuck defending the pawn. There's no bishop e3. Some idea of eventually using the bishop. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, I'm playing a5 to prevent b4, or at least discourage b4. King e2, delayed bond cloud. Really like to make f5 work. Let's start with a4. Yeah, gotta be very cognizant of time. I'm probably going for d5 next. Because the king's in the center. And if it uh, takes, I have f5 first and then takes back, and I'll have a a nice wall of center pawns. But actually, if takes here, takes. I probably just want to take back and then, then play f5. Okay, time is ticking. Bishop d2, safe move. Hmm. Take queen e7. Okay, time scramble time. Ooh. I think f4 is a panic move. Let's take first and then f5 come in. Okay, 
That took work. Good fights. I mean, I thought it was going to be easier after I took on H3, but maybe not quite. Okay. Um. Yeah, I was close. Back to tournament. So 4 out of 4. Penguin is also 4 out of 4. What? Alexa wanted to chime in there. Anyway, um, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Alexa, quiet. Quiet. No, no. Alexa, quiet. <laughs> Wait, did you really? Huh. Okay. Um... Oh, games are still going. So Penguin keeps winning. I could very well... So there's eight... There's eight people with perfect scores? I could very well play Penguin soon. Oh, also, I barely know the rules. Okay. Whew. Man, it's turning into a long stream, but it's fun. Um, this is probably the last round to late join, I think. If it's not too late already. Yeah, I was going to use Opening Tree from Penguin. But it's really... I've played Pe Penguin so many times that I know pretty much his whole repertoire. At least against my openings. So really the only thing I wanted to check was what I already checked in this, it's kind of a Joe Bava London. So there's 10 rounds total. We are almost halfway through. Uh, I guess we can watch the final game here. So Rook ending. Hey, it's Anonymous. Thanks Anonymous. Gifting a sub to Lunar Eclipse. So I saw I saw an eclipse once. You guys want to see an eclipse photo? <laughs> this game could take a while. You go to Flickr. Alexa, what's the difference between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse is when the moon aligns between the sun and the earth blocking the sun's light mm. and causing total or semi-darkness in the daytime on the Earth's surface. A lunar eclipse is when the Earth aligns between the sun and the moon, casting the Earth's shadow on the moon and causing oh. it to turn dark red during the nighttime. Interesting. Lunar eclipses occur every few months, but solar eclipses are about a year and a half apart. So this was, um, so two years ago, 2017, um, there is like this big rage about the the solar eclipse, and uh, St. Louis was like on the path of to totality, actually just outside St. Louis. So I went to like this uh, this kind of nature park and took photos. Um, it, it lasted it lasted close to two minutes. And yeah, to to look at the. At least for like this shot, this was a nice shot because the cloud was acting as a filter. Um, but to look at a partial eclipse, you needed special glasses. I didn't really have, I just had like my, my camera and a zoom lens. Um, but there, there were a lot of people like in this nature park, with, like very advanced photography equipment. This game is still going. Oh, they're playing out Rook versus Rook. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather revisit Eclipse photos. Oh yeah, this one. This was with a wide angle lens. Um, I had. I actually had a couple cameras. I had. I had a drone too. I have to find the drone footage from that day. Oh yeah, then this, like when there's an eclipse, the shadows are not, like they're they're in the crescent shape. If you look closely at the shadows, they're like, they're di kind of a different shape than, than typical shadows. Anyway. 
How did that start? Oh, that started from Anonymous gifting a sub to Lunar Eclipse. 100, wow, so many moves. What? Oh, ouch. Who did that? White did that, ouch. That was probably a mouse slip. Haha. <laughs> That's that's so tragic, but so hilarious. Is this gonna be two hundred moves? No, Vox and I mate before then. That's a long game though. Wow. What a sad finish. What a very sad finish. Okay, next round starting. Okay, King Boris. Good luck. Let's play. Stick with the main, the main repertoire. Yeah, this is my kind of this new London idea. Um, I don't know much beyond this, uh, but it's an interesting position. I think g4. So g4 is a very typical idea here. A simple idea, just pawn storming. And yeah, with d5, now the bishop's blocked. So I'm not scared about my queen. I could play this right away. I think I'll play knight e2 first. Just support my bishop. And it's a situation where... It looks very dangerous for black to castle king's side because I'm, I'm in very good shape to attack. So black might end up casting queen's side. But I'm still ready to push. Actually, queen d7, g5, then I would have to go back to g8. There's some knight b5 potential. That's logical. That move enables this because uh, the bishop supports. Let's just keep pushing. If knight e4, I'm probably okay with trading queen g3. I'm, I'm kind of discouraging knight g6 because h5 will be in the air. Yeah, this queen f3 line. I think it was like a Leela innovation, but Sockfish also approves it. It's a move that I think has become more known recently. Okay, this is still going to be a fight. So this pawn is kind of overextended, but it's defended. Really not easy to exploit. Black going for trades. So knight h5 is actually very tempting here. I think I'll play knight h5. Because black has to make some concession to defend the pawn, like either this, this, or castling. Castling is probably the best move. Now the question is what to do. I really want to play h5, but my knight's in the way. I think you just king b1. Like what else to do? And see what black does. Bishop g2. Actually, bishop g2 f4 is an idea. Yeah, and I'll connect the rooks. So then king b1, the rook's not undefended. So c5 won't be playable. Uh, queen d5 may be expected. But then king b1. It's going to be sharp. Really a matter of who can attack who more quickly. f5, wow. Five's playable. 
kind of like f4 here. Or maybe f3 even. I'll play f3. I realize f4 like it just kind of closes things down. I want to open things up. Okay, with the trade, like takes, takes. Yeah, we trade everything. Oh, I don't really want to trade queens, but I probably have to. Yeah. Hmm. So g5 might not be better here. If I take, I probably want to play g5. I could be slightly worse here, actually, depending what black does. But it's still unclear. Okay, that move makes me really happy. F4 was like the the key idea for black. I was probably in trouble after F4. I guess I'll play H5, why not? That's a good move. Oh, that's actually a really good move. Play rook h3 first. B3. Ooh. Getting forked. And now it's just a matter of playing quickly. Hmm. I'm down upon some fight. Interesting. Definitely some fight. I see four. Here we go. A mating attack is real. Again, threatening mate. Threatening mate. There we go. Okay, man, that was close. That was probably worse somehow, some way. Uh, back to tournament. Okay. Yeah, opponents. Played well. Um, I got low on time. Uh, yeah, th this maneuver is very typical. Like, the knight loves to come to e4. And like, I couldn't really stop it. And, like, when it comes to e4, it attacks this, this, and this. So, like, I'm already in some danger here. Did not play the right move. Probably had to play rook g1 here. And then, when I was down upon. But one upon back and rookie five kind of saved me. I thought black should black should take and take. Probably the best approach. But anything could have happened. Anyway. Why do I have the most points? Oh, because math. There's some kind of tiebreaker system, I think. The penguin, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be playing a very strong player next round. Um, curious, maybe there's someone else that can join. Mm. 
We played a somewhat game. normal one. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've played down the finest. Wasn't our first game, it was like the crab, I think. Have I ever been to Norway? Uh, I've never been to Norway. I wanted to go. There was a, a chess event scheduled for May, the chess party in Norway, but it kind of got cancelled or postponed. But uh, it's a country that's high on my, my bucket list. I've been to Iceland, which is probably the closest I've been to Norway. Whoa. I think bishop d5 should still be... Oh, bishop d5, there's this move. Wow. Yeah. These endings could be tricky. Okay, playing green arrow. Who is this? This is someone. Do I know this person? Ooh, Jovava London time. Or whatever this is. Yeah, I've played against this before. I think b5 is a move here. And then just develop, try and develop normally. So my idea of h6, knight h5. Also ideas of knight b6 to c4. That's really the only, only idea with this knight. Um, unless I maybe have e5 too. Not sure. Let's start with this. Let's be safe. Let's be solid. Thanks for subbing. Rookie mistakes. Welcome back. Subbing for 11 months. Yeah, e5 is actually looking attractive. Because knight b6 is just b3. And hit me. Hit me 645. Slumming with Prime. Thanks for that. A3. Okay, I'm just going to play a quick, simple move. Rook E8 will be useful, assuming the, the E5 break comes. In general, you want to put your rooks on files which are most likely to open. If there's no open files in the position already. So this is actually really interesting. It's kind of a pawn sacrifice, but maybe it's worth it. Let's just do it. Because b5 might fall in the end, but the center is opening up. This is a type of move, like if it was a longer game, I'd have to calculate. But here it's just pure intuition. A lot of choices for white. Ooh, doesn't take anything. So first move that comes to mind is b4. Let's do it. Bishop on b4 would be very nice. The center is defended. The knight's now pinned, but so is this knight. And queen a5 is an idea. Probably have to take back. Unless I can throw in queen a5. Queen a5 might be a really nice inclusion. So I'm threatening queen a1, knight b1, and then I win the queen. Um, and the main idea, I'm unpinning my knight. So king b1 I can take with the knight. Leaving the bishop is a, a less purposeful piece. And I exert more pressure here. Rook b8 is probably the move I want to play now. I can, I can also take on... There's so many options here. I can take on e5 with the rook. Maybe threatening this. But rook b1 looks... Looks difficult for white to deal with. Because normally the king wants to hide in the corner, but that's not possible. 
this pin combined with the potential pin on the B file I'm looking for a move for white. I'm not seeing anything, which is probably a good sign because a simple thread is just take. Okay, this is probably desperation. Oh, there's queen d3. I wonder if I can be cheesy and just play king h8. Be the ultimate cheese. It's risky, but let's do it. Because I just don't allow queen d3. Because uh, I think this is just more powerful. I mean, this is probably objectively good. But I'm more interested in winning the knight and then mating eventually. So okay, I should calculate like queen d3, but then just takes, 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 and then there's no b3. I guess there's queen d3 takes king c1. Okay, okay, here I'm winning the queen. Anything better? Let's win the queen. And bishop is still attacked. And so is a knight. I'll take the knight. A pawn is hanging too. Okay, this is pleasant. Uh, what to do? I'm enjoying this position too much. Take this thing. And then, oh, my rook is hanging. Play this move. Threatening to take and take. And bishop f5 coming. This is also an idea. D3. It's nice being up a queen. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that game. It was kind of a confusing middle game position. Uh but this kind of paid off. And so I was more expecting, okay, 35 games still going. So that was quick. I was more expecting takes. And then I eventually lose this pawn. I was probably going to take the knight. I don't think I would have. I don't know. Maybe I would have considered this. Um, yeah, this is actually a nice in-between move. I was mainly looking at this, takes, um, and then taking with queen. I mean, there's so many branches to this line. But casting queenside was a really risky move. Because the, the attack came like very, very quickly. Okay. So I feel like I'm in good form. I've have had some smooth games. I feel like watching, so watching like this, uh, these Carlson and Hikaru games. It definitely helps put me in better form. Oh, Penguin's still playing. Hey, I finished before Penguin. Oh, it's a time scramble. Ooh. Penguin in some trouble. But Penguin's like very tricky in these situations. And very fast. Oh wait, I, I miscounted. Penguin, Penguin's down a, or up a bishop. I just saw Black's attack. Yeah, Penguin's gonna win. Hey, it's Crosby, eight, 87 GOAT. Gifting a sub to Zodlak. Okay, so I'm definitely playing Penguin next. I'll probably be I'll probably be white. What does penguin play? Penguin 
What does Penguin play? He plays like French, I think. I should I should really check his yeah, what is he playing? Uh games? Because I'm pretty much guaranteed to play him with white. Oh, so he plays e4, e5. So it's a question. Yeah, he also plays French. Let's see this. Two knights French. Oh. I played him in this line before. So maybe I'll play. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll play e4. So he plays e5. Do I play a Nagminson? I play a Spanish. I don't know the Spanish repertoire though. Let's play a Spanish. I think he plays, I assume he plays mainline. I could be wrong though. Oh, he plays this stuff. Oh, let's play some vague memory of this line. I think it's d4. There's some cool idea it takes knight d5. Oh, does this not work? This probably doesn't work at all. Oh, d4 is a terrible move. Oh, you play that against knight e7. Okay, this is completely butchered opening prep. Yeah, the whole idea was knight d5, bishop g5. Ah, okay, I'm just down the pawn. I'm just down the pawn. I got confused. This is bad opening preparation. But maybe I can win a pawn back? Accidental gambit. Yeah, I guess... I was more looking at pawn takes knight d5 immediately with the knight's on c6. But at least he's thinking. He's probably just confused. Might be watching the stream. I don't think he's streaming. Shout out to Penguin. People should follow him on uh, on Twitch. Very strong player. Play c6. I'm tempted to sack a bishop and then get a knight to d6. Probably doesn't work though. So yeah, there's there's a few ways to defend the pawn. They all have their drawbacks though. There's always c3 like. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this isn't so bad. Like the more he's thinking, the more confidence I'm getting. Uh, I can take here. Bishop B, oh, pawn B5, wow. That's very sneaky. Oh, so he wants to play C5. I can play C4 here. This reminds me of Go. It's like the cutting points. It's confusing. Anyway, I want a pawn back, so it's equal material. Bishop a4 doesn't work. My pawn's still in danger, though. Knight f4. Mm. Probably knight f4. Queen e7. Actually, queen e7, queen e2. And I take with king. Problem is bishop b7's coming. I'm gonna have to deal with it. I guess queen, yeah, bishop b7, queen b3, rook b8. Maybe b4 here. Yeah, 
I, I can't I can't sit not doing anything. So the idea is take some bishop b2 and then this pawn is weak. If I can win this pawn, it's easier to defend this pawn. Interesting. You can take and then just bishop b2 come. So there's a line here, here, uh, queen d6, I take on d4. Oh, but takes hits the bishop. Oh, does that work? But I can play this move. I'm holding on to both pawns now. I don't care about my rook. Your bishop's more valuable than my rook. And this pawn should be much more of a weakness. Yeah, so it's kind of an exchange sack. Oh, that's tricky. Maybe f3? No. Oh, that's really tricky. Maybe f3. To do here. Queen c2. Ah, I don't know what to do. I'll just take that. Oh, that doesn't work though. It was a panic move. Wow, I want a time. Oh, that was a very slow time scramble. Man. Oh man. It's so it's so hard with the increment. I never thought I would flag penguin with increment. Because usually penguin's unflaggable without thank increment. Thank you, Eric, for all you do. Oh, thank you. She you nine. She you nine. I appreciate that. And hello to Finny Finny. Okay. Yeah, that, that game will deserve further analysis in the future. But I just have to like mentally regroup. Honestly, I, I don't think that was a great quality game. I had I messed up the opening. But somehow somehow it was interesting. Actually let me check. I'm just curious if I stumbled into like some known thing. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, thanks, G Cook. The <laughs> 1000 bits. And things down DD. The smash bits. Yeah, D4 is, is not a move. Even though, okay, it's been played by lower level masters. I got confused because I, I had a game once with Knight E7 where this position, D4, is, uh, is really interesting. Um, and the bishop's not yet committed, and after it takes knight d5, that's a really cool line. And if Doc's not careful, there's mating ideas. But uh, I, I really just got confused. Anyway. Yeah, I don't want to like accidentally forfeit a game by being in a different tab. So games are wrapping up. Um... Whoa, it's a hundred dollars. Great job and thanks for the great content. Thanks so much, Kanuki. Kanuki. Uh I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thanks so much. Okay, playing Ricky Rich. Okay, I have to focus. Banish penguin to the Arctic. Hmm. Oh, that's where penguins live. Can you banish someone to their natural habitat? 
I saw penguins in Australia. C3 is a tricky move. GG. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm I'm debating what line to to play here, because if I if I play this, there's there's takes, and I'm not sure. Let's go for it. Um, okay, that's what I was hoping for. Now I'm back in my main prep. Queen b3, c4 is the main line. Um, I think knight a3 is a playable move. Queen c1 also playable. Play bishop f5. Yeah, the drawback of queen c1 is like I just have nice development. I might want to play h6 before e6 in the event of knight h4. And then rook. Yeah, rook c1 will come eventually, or rook c8 to align with the queen. I'm curious if. I probably don't want to allow knight h4. So I'll play h6. Yeah, it's kind of like a reverse queen's gambit. Where I've the one I've been the one like pushing the C pawn. White has a semi-slav kind of triangle setup. Probably just want a complete development. At some point white's probably gonna take. Always have to be careful of this move. But yeah, the general plan, put the rooks in the center, be solid. Rook c8 will maybe threaten to take twice on, uh, on d4 because of the, the pin. Hmm. Yeah, we might end up trading, probably take with pawn. That way I can take and play c5 again. I should still consider this move too, except not anymore. Okay, so now there's no more knight d7. Bishop d3, good move. Yeah, very much positional game. So maybe what I can do, we can just trade and then get in c5. Hey, look. Oh, hey. Hail Krishnan. Oh, hey. Hail. How's it going? Take. Bishop takes. Hmm. Yeah, white has some annoying control here. Not thrilled with this position actually. Put the queen back on c7, maybe some idea knight d7, bishop f6. Because white has very good control over e5. There's a funny line. So I'm gonna allow this. Ooh, I forgot about f4. I was thinking bishop g5. Yeah, I'm kind of gambiting a pawn. F4 right away is less scary. Bishop c5 here. Okay with trades. That's a terrifying move. I could play f5. I probably will end up playing f5. Unless, oh, f6 is, f6 takes 94. Oh, that's so nifty. Yeah, 94 is nice, because the, the queen defends g7. I'll watch out for time again. Yeah, if the knight gets to e4, then I'll be very happy. The bishop won't be so, so menacing with the pawn here. I 
And if, if white takes, oh, that's a tricky move. Start with this, defend everything. Still want to play this. Take the queen and then probably double up. These pawns will be targets. Here's an acrostic during your time pressure. E4, are you single in discreet lust for the streamer? I think I just want to double up. So C4 could come, but then D4, E5. G, E5 might be the main plan anyway. Oh, that's a good move. Let's play d4 and then take and hopefully win back a pawn. Yeah, simplifying a little bit. Objectively, it's very close to equal. This is what I was hoping for. Because now the king just gets to the square. Rook defends everything. Hmm. It's all about the furthest pushed past pawn. Um, this move. Oh no, I'm losing. Oh, that's so sad. Ah, oh, so close. Queening would have been stalemate. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> I, I had the stalemate trap set up. Well played, Ricky Rich. <sighs> okay. Well played. Um, there, there were opportunities for a draw there. Uh, I kind of over pushed. I lot yeah, h5 was a bad move. Um, if I wanted to play for a win, I don't know what I should have done. Anyway, life goes on. Um, I'm probably still tied for first. I don't know though. What round is this? I even know the round. Oh, I'm still okay. I still said I'm in first place. That's nice. So maybe still controlling my own destiny. Okay, playing this line against the modern. I'm going for the early e5. I think e5 can be played right away. And then 
As far as I know, it's useful to include h3 to then castle, and now I don't have to worry about bishop g4. Yeah, there's some idea eventually bishop a6. Interesting. So if I play a4, bishop a6 is kind of annoying, but maybe not too annoying. I think worst case, I have c4. I just want to play rook d1. Mm. So maybe bishop c4. Also, thanks for subbing. To do. Bishop a4. Bishop a4, c4. Let's go for this. Ooh. I was more expecting bishop a6 there. Okay, so these are like rook d1 and c4 are the moves I want to get in. Um, play c4 right away. Bishop a6 is probably playable. Reminiscent of like a scotch opening. Might be six expected. Yeah, I think I'm okay like giving away this bishop. It wasn't doing too much anyway. And there's a lot of potential, I was going to say, to attack. Knight d7 is a good move. Ooh. I may have gone wrong. I have this move. Hitting the rook and preparing bishop d6. It could get very crazy. C6 is also hanging. Okay, bishop d6 is nice. Yeah, c6 falls. This is very nice. And then knight c3. Um, a5 is also hanging. Yeah, earlier I was going to say there's potential to like attack on the king side, but the queen needs to to stay defending the bishop. F five. Wow, does F five work? Wow, I might be in trouble here. That was very resourceful. No, I'm actually in, oh no, I have this move. Takes, takes, takes. I think this saves me. It better save me. So this was a Zwischenzug, but this is a counter Zwischenzug. In between move. Okay, now queen h4. I still have this nice construction. This is like the most solid man-made structure. I don't think I care too much about takes takes. Maybe I do. I guess I kind of do. Hmm. 
I mean, white's in pretty good control here. We just have to keep everything defended. Now, knight might come to d6. His rook wants to be improved. Again, the clock, very stress inducing. Probably rook d3. Always have to watch out for like these weird tactics with e5. So rook d3 and rook bd1 looks like a simple plan. Maybe king g2 for good measure. Interesting. But h5. Idea king g2 and then rook h1. Okay, that was, I think that was a clean game. There's some complicated moments, but got the job done. Um, so that was round that was round nine. So one more round left. Ooh. You haven't oh, streamed in playing. a while. I miss the informative really? chess. I stream I've been streaming almost every day. <laughs> but maybe I, I haven't streamed recently this time. Also, welcome back. Reps reps for Jesus. Thanks for subbing for two months. Yeah, I streamed I streamed three times yesterday. And this is my second stream of today. Um, have I been flag? I guess I have been flagging a lot of people. Th this one second increment is very deceiving because you get too comfortable and then in, yeah, when you're less than like five seconds, it's so easy to flag. I guess I haven't done one of these tournaments, like played a full tournament like this. Did, oh, Penguin pot. Oh, Penguin. Oh, Penguin lost to Ricky Rich. Ooh. Yeah, Ricky Rich is, is very, should maybe be renamed Tricky Rich. Now I kind of regret not taking the draw because that could ultimately affect the outcome of things. So I'm going to play one of these people, Comsack or, or was Comsack the one, or was probably the one who won that rook ending. Maybe that was a different game. Okay, final round. Starts in five seconds. Giango, okay. I'll stick with my main repertoire. I'm just gonna try and play good moves. Do I know this person? From Canada. Ding's number one fan. Interesting. Generally, I enjoy this move order. Of course, it depends what black does, but yeah. So knight a3 is a nice, uh, nice idea. Um, preparing knight c4, and also the idea is to meet queen b2. With wait a minute, I had this earlier, or um, I had this other day, and I messed it up. I think knight b5 is the move here. Yeah, knight b5, and then eventually queen digs d4. Some tricky variation. Yeah, this is actually a really tricky variation. Takes, takes. Mm. 
And it's something I should really just know, but no one ever plays this. Right, I'll take with queen. So is a, is a question if takes, do I go for knight c7? Probably not. It just looks way too risky and it's probably, it leads to an easy position for black to play. So I probably just take and then make black decide how to defend knight c7. And currently I'm threatening knight d6 which opponent induces. Has to take. Yeah, a6 was a, a pleasant surprise. Thanks for subbing. Eric, hey. Eric Kim. For, for five months. So I have the bishop here. I think I want to play c3. Just extra solid. This bishop is not going anywhere for the time being. If takes. I might take that with the c pawn. Just to get the c file. f6 is very logical. Develop a bishop. So if knight b6, bishop b3, the knight blocks the pawn. That's hard to develop. Also anticipating this move, so bishop should be nice on c4. Some future idea, f4, f5. Interesting. Yeah, let's take towards the center. There might be a decision coming up if I should take the knight. Which I probably shouldn't, should probably just keep the bishop here. Okay, wants to play knight f5, so let's play e4. Very likely see this. Well, I can actually get some initiative here. Yeah. A lot of moves coming with threats. Not a question, do I castle knight a5 coming? Castling or rook d1 or d d5 looks nice. d5 knight d4. Oh, yeah, black's fighting. Also have this move. Might be the move to go for. I'm just trying to keep my bishop here and consolidate. King probably wants to... It depends what black does. Because knight a5... And this knight is very devious. Hmm. Might end up sacking a pawn. Like a4 here. Even some like king e2. d6 is coming. Let's go for b3. Trying to calculate a long line with knight g2. Like king d2. Yeah, this is probably just equal. I have to watch my clock. Yeah, I mean, black can get the opposite color bishop ending, which I was trying to avoid. I mean, there's still life in that position. Okay, avoiding d6.
This could be a long game. Playing for a win. Oops. Okay, easy win. Okay, got the job done. Oh, so the, um, yeah, I kind of panicked in this time scramble and almost accidentally pre-moved lost, but, um, so the, the move I'm most proud of this game was d5. d5 just came at the exactly right moment because otherwise the king would walk to d5 and I could be worse. Um, but then, yeah, once these pawns start rolling, <clears throat> start rolling, it's uh, it's not easy to, to stop. Anyway, hey, clear first. Nice finish, clear Carlson first. Like. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, this, this one second increment. I was probably very close to flagging on multiple occasions. Whew. Well, it was a fun tournament. <laughs> I honestly was not expecting to win it, given like this, um, yeah, very strong player, Creep30, who's also a streamer, Malkumian, um, and Penguin. So I, I dodged Malkumian. And, uh, and maybe some other, um, yeah, this Manit is, is also very strong. Anyway, that was fun. I'll probably put the whole thing on YouTube. Uh, so if you're watching in the future on YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks again to, to Road to Chessmaster for, for organizing this. Recently picked up the London because you made it look like so much mm. fun. Him on a 13 hey. win streak, 23 24th games won and got a 1k yellow. Thanks mm. for the great content. Congrats That's great on to hear. first, by the way. Thanks so much. And thank you, Hortbeck, for subbing.